The Hollywood drama between Russell Westbrook and the Lakers continues. Former MVP and LA front office reportedly have mutual interest in parting ways this offseason, despite reports of an impassioned speech delivered by Westbrook to the team before the All-Star break. Ah, oh, boy. So the question here is, will Russ <laughs> be one and done with the Lakers? And I think universally we would all agree this is an experiment that is not really working out. And everybody's taking shots at LeBron because, hey, this is LeBron's trade. Well, I, yes, LeBron made a mistake. But you know what, guys? Was every Picasso painting a masterpiece? Was every Picasso a keeper? Because we know that LeBron historically has done a damn good job putting teams together. This one, it didn't really work out. Now, it's weird to see this report coming out with 20 games left in the season. Haven't even seen AD back on the court for the playoff push. Things can happen, but I would still largely agree with this report. Uh, pr pretty detailed stuff uh, from Mr. Fisher. Uh, listen, you package Russ... The immortal Kendrick Nunn, who has yet to play with the Lakers. Gosh, I can't believe that story. And a couple picks. Remember, once this season ends, the Lakers should have 60 mil in expiring contracts to trade, and they will now have two first-round picks they can trade. So if you attach all that money and that potential uh, expiring deals with the draft picks, the Lakers could go out and make some hay. Now, are they going to get a superstar? Probably not, but... I think we just learned you don't really need one. The Russ thing did not work out. In the bubble, it was LeBron, AD, and some spare parts, Kuzma, Caruso. You know, the Lakers can admit, we messed up. We should not have let Caruso go. Our defense has fallen off a cliff. We don't mind losing Ingram. We don't mind losing Lonzo when you can bring back Anthony Davis. But Russell Westbrook just simply has not worked out in Los Angeles. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I think what I feel bad about Russ about is once this contract is over, Rick, I would venture to say, I don't know that he's still got a spot in the NBA. This kind of feels like the end of oh. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was like a 20-point scorer. All of a sudden, he wouldn't go to the bench. He got old and brittle. When you can't make shots and the athletic ability starts to wane, Rick, what's the future? Like, what are you bringing in yeah. Westbrook for? And that's why I think, like, I'm, I'm hopeful that his end of tour with the Lakers is good. Remember, he's an L.A. guy. You don't want... Uh, you know, again, I was at Staples for the Mavericks game. And, Rick, one of the saddest things I've seen this season, Westbrook comes up for that, like, 10-foot bank shot. Everybody in the arena is yelling, no, don't do it, Russ. And, and you know, it's a miss. And then the, the Mavs go down and score. And then Russ, everybody, it's a timeout. Everybody goes to the bench. Russ goes back to that spot and is still trying to bank in the shot. And he's still missing the shot. And it's like, oh, man, you feel really bad for this guy. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, Rick. Yeah, no, you're right. And but the the report was that the that there was mutual uh, interest in parting ways, and that's completely understandable. And I, the timing of it, I don't know. I you, you could have said this a month ago, and no one would have been a surprise that that everybody had decided that the experiment has not worked, is not going to work, uh, and so there's no reason to keep going down the same road. Russell Westbrook, and to your point about him going back out there. The thing that I respect about Russell is that he's still trying. And I can't say that for every member of the Lakers uh, roster at this point. <clears throat> he's still trying. He's missing that shot. He's still going out and trying to, to fix it so that he can make it. I'm going to at least give him that much respect. And no, there will still be a place for him in the league if he recognizes where he is. You're right. His athleticism dissipating is having a major effect on his game. Always expected that to be the case. It, it's predicated on his supreme athleticism. If he's willing to take a lesser role, then he's still going to have a place in the league. He's still dynamic. He still plays hard. He still does some very, very special things. Now, what he's learned when it comes to playing with the Lakers and specifically with LeBron James is why so many stars have declined there the opportunity go. to play there with LeBron go. James. Because when things go south, it's never on LeBron James. It's always on his co-star. It's his fault. That's why Kawhi and KD and PG and Dane and, and um, if I mentioned Kyrie, any number of, of guys have had the opportunity to go play with him. Now, I did a piece uh, a couple years ago uh, after he first came to L.A. And they couldn't get anybody to join him through free agency. They had to go trade for Anthony Davis. And I, and, I, and I asked, like, why is it? Because 
We always thought the reason he couldn't get a co-star in Cleveland was because it was Cleveland. Guys didn't want to go there, and they didn't know how long LeBron planned to stay there. So they didn't want to be left holding the bag in Cleveland. But now he's in L.A. He's with the Lakers. There's no excuse for anybody not wanting to come and play with him. And the reason was twofold. One, he takes up all the oxygen in the room. You're, you're not going to be a co-star. You're going to be number two. You're going to be decided number two. And if things go wrong, if things go well, well, you're playing with LeBron James. Of course you're winning. And if they don't go well, well, it's your fault. And if I look at the way, look, I know LeBron's scoring numbers are good. The other numbers, not so good. He's not the same LeBron James, certainly not defensively. Russell Westbrook is essentially the same Russell Westbrook that he's been the last two, three years. The difference is, he was in Houston and Washington. He wasn't playing for the Lakers. We didn't pay attention to every single game, every single shot, every single minute. The only difference in Russell Westbrook is that everybody's paying attention to him. Not that he's fundamentally changed who he has been the last few years. So that's where the parting of the ways would be good for both. Doesn't work for the Lakers, but it also doesn't work for Russell Westbrook. He can get back to being a far more respected player elsewhere than he is in L.A. right now. Yeah, this is this is the right decision. And re regardless of how it came out, when it's coming out, it is what is inevitable when you talk about the Lakers and Russell Westbrook. It just was not a good fit. And, Rick, where, where it starts for me is LeBron James. You talked about it. Like, LeBron James is as great a player as he is. And as great as he makes other players, it is challenging for a ball-dominant star in this league to be on the court at the same time with LeBron James because his game isn't going to have to be altered or changed. It is yours that has to change. You have to evolve and learn how to play with him, not the other way around. And so I think that's the part that Russell Westbrook has struggled with more than anything. His, yes, his, we, we, you've said it all. His athleticism is deteriorating. His jump shot, is, it's never been a great one to start, but it is just in the slumps. But I'm not going to knock Russell Westbrook simply because we've seen players handle this far worse. We've seen Ben Simmons just last year and this year decide, I'm not going to even play. I don't even want, I don't want anything to do with anything in Philly because of, his inability to overcome his own fears of shooting the basketball because of missing and struggling at the strike. Where And then we've seen James Harden, where he, I don't want to play because I don't like the fit. I don't like the wow. style of offense we're playing. It doesn't fit who I am, so I'm just going to sit out. I'm, I'm done. And then he goes over, and now he's having success because it's a, a offense that is built around his abilities and what he does well. I do believe that Russell West, Westbrook falls on his feet somewhere, but it will be, to your point, both of your points, that Allen Iverson analogy, Jason, is spot on. Yeah. You have to be, and, and, and a guy who can probably speak to it and encourage him in this is right on his bench in Carmelo Anthony, someone where in Houston, when first asked to sit on the bench, or I'm sorry, with the Thunder, when first asked to sit on the bench, he was like, no, I, I'm, that's not me. I'm not who? I'm Carmelo. <laughs> but at some, at some point, you have to understand where you are with your game and in and, and your career. Yeah. And he can have a, a, a continued career mm -hmm. if he's willing to take that role and become that bench role player that mm -hmm. where that second unit is surround, surrounded and based on his level of play and what he provides to an offense versus the other way around. But real quick, uh, this idea that Russell Westbrook, oh, he, you get credit for not pulling a Ben Simmons and sitting out. Bro, LeBron saved his ass. He pulled him out of Washington, okay, playing with a bunch of plumbers in Washington. And they're not going anywhere. He brought him to L.A., his hometown. So let's give LeBron credit for that. And now, playoffs. Rick, I am really, really all – you're getting on my nerves with this LeBron bashing, Rick. It's going overboard. It almost feels personal. Do If you go and ask – Kevin Love and Chris Bosh right now. Hey, guys, I know you got a lot of the blame when things went south playing with LeBron. 
But would you trade those championship rings to go back uh, to, to Toronto, Chris Bosh, and w lose in the second round every year? Or Kevin Love, uh, go b and back to Minnesota no. where you didn't win anything? Hell no. Those guys are thankful to no. LeBron for bringing them sure. to championship winning teams. Of course, listen, right. when things go south, somebody's getting blamed. And should you blame LeBron, who's okay. like, I don't know, first team all NBA every year, uh, MVP candidate every year? Ain't first no, team LeBron NBA should this not year. be blamed. I mean, look what happened against uh, Curry and Durant in the finals. LeBron was unbelievable. He had a case, maybe, to be the finals MVP going up against Durant when he's putting 50 points on the board and then he breaks his hand because he's ticked off at the rest of his team. Like, guys, the, the LeBron bashing's got to stop. Just because he brought Westbrook over DeRozan, a mistake. LeBron would even admit that. Just because he picked Westbrook Look, over uh, Buddy Heald, another mistake. But, uh, Rick, the LeBron bashing is sounding silly, dude. It's really it's sounding silly. It's, it's not bashing. It's, it's not bashing. It's, 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 it's the reality of where LeBron James is right now. What, at MVP candidate at 37? He's accomplished. What's that? He's an MVP candidate at 37. Top five in scoring. No, he's not. Top five he's in player efficiency candidate. rating. Oh, yes, he he's is. He's not an MVP oh, you wanna... can... He's not an MVP candidate, and you keep telling me about uh, uh, efficiency. You keep giving me analytics. There's seven yeah, games under 500. If, if his... I don't... Give, give me numbers. Kevin Love was a perennial uh, statistical wonder in Minnesota and couldn't get to the playoffs. I've never bought into this idea that... You have these statistics. That if, if they don't translate to winning, then they're not good statistics. They're hollow numbers. And what, uh, what uh, LeBron James brought to Kevin Love and brought to Chris Bosh, those guys, yes, they had to change their games in order to be part of a championship equation. And it was worth it. Why? Because it resulted in a championship. Yeah. That hasn't exactly. happened the last two years, and it's not happening this year. So Russell Westbrook is trying to figure out, how do I play next to LeBron James? It's not like he's not willing to change things. He's tried. He's, not he's afraid to take a jump shot at this point. As like, well he should be. He's doing everything he can to no. adjust. No, he's not, Rick. That article matter. says he refuses to be the sixth man. He doesn't want to go to the bench. That article claims that Russ like, said, that's I'm not the only. That. Like, that's the only issue with the Lakers, that the, if Russell Westbrook would only become sixth man, that the Lakers would be winning. And that's, that's ridiculous. And by the way, you completely underplayed the team that won in the bubble. Alex Caruso was there. Contevious Caldwell Pope. Dwight Howard had one of, the, like, one of his best years in the last five years. Yeah. They simply don't have those pieces now. And the bubble was perfectly set up for them to take advantage of the situation. I'm not going to discredit that they won a championship. I'm not going to put an asterisk on it. But everything came together. I don't know that if you don't have three months off, which allows Anthony Davis to have a short runway and LeBron James <laughs> at this point in his career to have a short runway and not have to travel, that they necessarily win. They, they were better than everybody else, legitimately. But the circumstances played perfectly into the team that they had. And LeBron James has not been able to recreate those circumstances yeah. or that team. And to put it all on Russell Westbrook as the problem is ignoring that LeBron James is not the same player that won those championships in Miami or Cleveland or even in the bubble. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.